Hey guys, how's it going? Ghosty Rich here today, and today we're going to be working on this 2008 Ford Explorer. It has four-wheel drive, and the diffs definitely need a fluid change. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to change the fluids in the diff and the transfer case. First thing we need to do is get underneath. But don't forget a half-inch ratchet. Look at the main cross member. Look up here at the pumpkin. If you look up, that is what a half-inch ratchet will fit completely into. So go ahead and line it up. Mine might be just a little fun to do. Give me one second, I'm gonna line it up in the hole. No extensions or anything. It should literally just click in right there. And then yours will probably be tight too. And the initial crack is the worst. Go ahead, get it loose. After you do, you can take it out the rest of the way by your hand. Just reach up and pull it out. And ta-da, look at that. So that's kind of a magnet usually on it. And it'll usually hold up if there's any little pieces of metal in there. Now there's two ways you can do this. If you're just going to pull the fluid out, what you would do is, well, just pull the fluid out um, with an extractor. Or what you can do is if you want to inspect your diff, you would pull out all these bolts and then separate this to take a look. I'll leave it up to you. I'll let you know in a second which way I'm going to go. Again, I know a lot of people aren't going to have one of these, but you can get other two-way pumps. For this particular model that uh, we use here, these are all other options you can have. Again, one will usually be a sucking inlet, and the other one will push it out. So you would just choose. If you're sucking, you'd put that in, and then it would pull the fluid. And when you're trying to suck it out of the bottle later on, you would have this would be your suction which would go in your bottle and it would push it out that end it's that simple really i mean same with this one end sucks one end blows this one is a, just a sucker it sucks it and then you would squeeze it out into a bucket much messier method again we're just going to use this one because it's really the easiest way to do this if you're using the same mighty vac make sure the valve is closed and of course on vacuum it's uh this is pushed down so it's open on the vacuum side so that way it's vacuuming it out so if you have two people what you do is take the end there we're just going to slide it down into the bottom of that pumpkin you want to make sure it gets down into the bottom so if you have one try and make sure it's straight and yeah i can feel it it just capped out now that it's capped out i tell the guy on the other end all right start pumping and then you would just keep going and look at that up it comes and just keep going until there's no fluid left and it's good to reposition it and do your thing and make sure that like i said all that fluid is coming out so one thing i'm doing is i'm watching this and also watching the bigger tube and what you're looking for is well look at that it's basically empty now so the vacuum is showing us that we've been able to pull out all the fluid that's why i love those mighty vacs you just pump them up till they pressurize and then it just keeps pulling and pulling for you so we'll let it continue doing its job and again we don't see any metal shavings in this at all which is really really good if we were seeing any like glistening or anything like that we'd definitely be pulling that cover off. Now, if you wanted to, what you would do, like I said, is you pull all these bolts off. You can use a drywall knife and you can separate this cover and then you can go in there with brake clean and clean it all up and inspect. But we're not gonna do that because we haven't had any sort of signs of wear. There's no clunkiness, there's no nothing. And really, we haven't seen any metal shavings or anything just this dirty fluid so might as well keep it and it also looks like it's still sealing as you can see this had been serviced at one point and that's the only reason why there's dark here it hasn't been leaking if we had a leaky diff or if yours was leaking then a hundred percent what i would tell you to do is pop these bolts and go ahead separate it with the knife and then go ahead and um rtv it and put the cover back on if you're going to be jacking this up, just so you know, jack it up, I would say right about here. When you jack it up on the frame, go ahead and put your jacks down here because it's a nice flat spot. 
So jack up on the sub right here. Once you jack up on the frame right here, you can go ahead and slide your jacks down there. Two in the rear, and you can do the same up front, only on the front area here. What I would do when you jack it up, you can either go off the main frame area up there or just simply go right here, jack it up right about here and then put your jack stand standing on here. I've got ramps in the front and jack in the rear. And again, I always keep my jack just right underneath it just as another security point. You can do whatever you wish. Just thought I'd show you. Right here, as you can see, this is going to be our bottle filler. This is the other pump that I showed you earlier. It's best to use this one because, well, it works the easiest. So if you look up, I like to just take this and just squeeze it in there until it locks. Might be hard to do with a camera in my hand, but yeah. Literally just like that. Perfect. Now that that's semi-locked in, again, I'll rearrange that a little bit. You just want to squeeze it till it clicks kind of in there in the hole. And then you take this in, put it like this, open up your bottle and put the tip in and start pumping. It'll start pumping fluid in and we keep pumping until fluids start draining out of there. What'll happen is it'll fill that pumpkin up and then after it fills the pumpkin, it'll drip over the edge once it's full. As you can see, we got our bottle in there. I'm pumping away and it's pumping fluid in. Again, we're gonna line our pan up. Just so that way when it starts dripping, which it will at some point, we'll be able to catch the little bit of fluid that'll come up. If you Had to reach for the camera, but as you can see, see how it's just started steady stream like that overfilling? Now we know that we've got enough. So we'll take it off of here, and after we take it off of here, we can move it to the rear when the rear is ready. Permatex thread sealant. It's great to put on your drain and fill plugs. What it does is it just seals it up so no liquid's gonna come out and you don't have to bother with RTV or anything. Just do a light strip of it just like you would with any other thing like uh, Loctite and as you tie it in, it's going to seal the threads. So go ahead, wipe it and just tighten it by hand first. And then after you tighten it by hand first, you can go ahead and just wrench on it like you would an oil plug so as you can see it's all wiped up and we are tight i went and i went with a real good one-hander made sure she's tight no two-handing you don't want to strip out your cover again one thing that i would suggest doing for the front cover this one hasn't have it done yet but i'm going to recommend it is if you can get a cover an aftermarket cover with a drain plug on it get it it'll save you having to take the rubber off of here or even needing that uh, fluid extractor so if you're going to buy that diff cover definitely just have one messy time where you pull out all these bolts and there's enough videos on there install one with a drain plug on it just like your rear has let's move to the rear and i'll show you how much easier it is to do the rear diff on this vehicle all right so this is your rear take a look it's got a drain so the drain, the fill, so you know what the deal is. Go ahead, we're gonna take out the fill one first. Go ahead, pop your ratchet in there and loosen off the fill plug. Pull the plug and let it drain. Again, it's pretty thick stuff, so if it's cool, if the fluid is very cool, it's gonna take a while to drip out. And don't rush it, let it drain for as long as you can. Just like what we did up front, go ahead, throw some thread sealing on here and pop this one back in the drain hole. When you go to fill it, slide it through that frame hole and it goes right in. It's exactly what it's for. So go ahead and put that in there and start pumping until she overflows once again. There we go, she's dripping if you sort of see it. Tells us that it's full. It literally took three bottles, so like one and a bit for the front and then one and the last little bit of that one and then the fourth bottle, it was like four pumps out of the last bottle here. So yeah, four bottles will do you. Here we got our transfer case. When we're looking at the transfer case, as you can see, fill, drain. One thing that's 
always good to do is actually take the fill one out first because if you can't fill it back up, don't drain it. So always click this one in, go ahead, remove, which is definitely in there good. Your drain one first. I'm gonna have to use two hands for this and get this up camera to the hand. So go ahead and loosen that off first. To show the importance to you guys, I have my biggest ratchet right here on three step downs to get onto the drain, or sorry, our fill plug, and it was that stuck. So again, this is why you always take out the fill spot first, because if you don't and you can't get it out, well, sure it's nice to drain it, but you definitely need to fill it. All right, let's go ahead and pull out the bottom one. And again, this will be your drain one. Our top one's just draining a little bit just because the could be the a little bit of the angle of the vehicle, but as you can see, lots of fluid. <laughs> the quick drain. Just let it uh, go for a little bit and change as much as you can. See how it's really dark red? Shows you that it hasn't been changed in a while. Usually, uh, of course, fresh tranny fluid will be nice and bright red, so that stuff has definitely not been changed in a while. Go ahead, let it drain for a while. Go ahead, wipe it up there, so when you tighten it, it'll spread back over all the threads. One hand tight, go with your ratchet. Once again, sink it on. Once we get our one hand tight, let's grab our pump, and it's time to start pumping it up. So, if you're like me and you got one of your Little fluid pumps, all you do is you sink that end in. If you've never used one before, I'm sure you have, but okay, perfect. She's locked in. Like I said, you just squeeze the little black tip in, and then this is your bottle fill up. This just slides in, and you start pumping the handle, and she'll suck out of that end and push it into that end. So, under your bottle and start a pumping. All you do is, I'll show you with one hand. Compress and as you compress it just keeps filling and you just keep filling until it starts spewing out that hole as though You are filling your diff. There you go. Nice bright and bright red So now that she's doing that go ahead slip out the tip and throw a little bit of thread sealant on and seal her up So We've got them both sealed up, literally. A little bit of thread sealant, they've been tightened up. No tighter than you would do an oil drain plug. And to tell you the truth, you'll feel a cap out. Just don't go He-Man and you'll be fine. It's gonna tighten up, that thread sealant's gonna help hold it, and I would not recommend any sort of Loctite because after, you know, 40, 50,000 uh, miles, which is like 60, 70,000 kilometers, if you go by Ford's recommendations, then yeah, you're going to want to make sure that you can get those out again because they're going to get corroded, especially depending on where you live in the world. If you live in a place where you can see we have a lot of salt water in the air here, so you get a lot of rust, so everything corrodes up. Anyways, that is how you change the fluids on your diffs and on your transfer case. Transfer case took about two liters of Marcon 5, so just make sure you have that at the ready. Well, that's all she wrote. Take it for a rip around the block. Make sure you watch for it in the next 500 kilometers for any sort of leaking. And if you ended up uh, resealing your front diff cover, I'm sure you watched some other video on how to do it. But if you did it yourself, just make sure you wait for that gasket maker to set. Uh, for the thread sealant, it'll dry super quick. You don't have to worry about it. So if you just extracted it the way we did out of the front, you're good to go. Anyways, thanks again for watching. Press the like if it helped you out and subscribe for more.